Alex King. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. How's it going? <laughs> I'm good, thank you, my friend. How are you? No, nah, I'm good, thank you. I, uh, <laughs> but funny, we're, we're, we're a bit behind on time here. Oh, about uh, for a half reason. an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we were yarning off, off before um, about, about what happened this morning. You want to explain a little bit? <laughs> yeah, so um, everyone that's listening to this right now, watching this right now, they're going to be like, classic Alex, <laughs> late. Always late, late to work, late to meetings. No, but I have a good reason, okay? Mm. So my reason is I was in town at a meeting and then I came back from town and then I went to the wrong school <laughs> and then I came to this school, but we're here. We're right. And that's right. We are here. <laughs> I said to you before, like it, it actually happens all the time. People people turn up and, oh, and they actually go to the wrong primary school. I'm going to I'm gonna blame Google Maps for this yeah, one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I think, honestly, I did it the first time as well before I came to the school. I actually went to the wrong school uh, and I got told, yeah, you're at the wrong school. But luckily, the lady was really nice. She was like, oh, I think yeah. you're at the wrong school. Gave me directions. <laughs> wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. We're here. I'm pretty sure over there it's Karma, right? Who, um, I think that's a receptionist lady over there. I'm but, not yeah, sure. I don't know if it was. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Long story short, you're here. That's the main thing, eh? <laughs> How are we feeling anyway? All good? Good. Now that we've, you know, not rushing around and I was like, oh my gosh, I hate being late. And yeah, we're yeah. good. We're really good. And um, it's a Friday. I don't yeah. know if you'll play this on a, it won't play out on a Friday, but it's Friday yeah. when you're, when we're recording this. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, looking forward to the weekend and nice. um, Mahi's been really good. So yeah. 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 Good week so far then? Yeah. Good week. Um, the boys and I have gotten along. We like each other. Nice. That's good. <laughs> no scraps. That's good. So yeah, no, it's it's been uh, it's been a fun week. Good, good, good. I appreciate you jumping on the podcast because we actually only caught up a few weeks ago. Yes. Um, for the first time. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, pretty much now we're here, mm -hmm. uh, which is awesome. So, um, yeah, it's real cool to have you on. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, very first podcast, which yeah, yeah. is um exciting. I never normally do podcasts. Yeah, why is that? I'm intrigued. <sighs> People have asked me to jump on their podcast or do interviews and. I don't know. I'm I'm always used to being you. Like I'm mm. always used to asking the questions being and the interviewer. Yeah, 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 being the interviewer and learning about people. And I always, I find interviews. I don't know about myself. I get really uncomfortable, but also because I feel like a lot of time when you do professional podcasts or you do professional interviews or whatever you want to call mm. them in the media, can often sway. The information that you say or things that you've yeah. you've said in them, um, because yeah, I've grown up my whole life and you know watching my dad do interviews and things like that, and just the way that media perceives some people, I've yeah. always kind of like been taken aback. But doing it with a friend in a, in a comfortable environment, more than happy, and it makes it easier. Yeah, I guess, so. yeah, because yeah. yeah. you're just like you're having a chat. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, yeah. I actually, um, it's funny you bring that up because um, I, I was, I had my last guest was Chelsea Ellie, and she mm -hmm. said the same thing. She said that the media tends to sway some of the, um, I guess the comments that you make. Yeah, you know, and they, they twist it into something that's going to sell. You oh know, yeah, and they the sell public. this, they sell the um, the sizzle of the conversation yeah. rather than the whole conversation itself. So they'll take like one statement that you said maybe off air, and they'll yeah. be like Alex King says this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Make it more I? than what it is. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, come on. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, I, I actually want to start off by um, talking about something real quick um, mm -hmm. on my FM. Yes. I think this week or last week, um, I saw a post actually on your guys' feed, and uh, it was actually when you guys were sharing. Um, I don't know if it was Brooke um, or Fame who asked you. I can't remember um, what you're most scared of. Oh, deepest fear. Deepest fear. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember when I was watching that too. Eh? And um, was that this week or last week that it came out? This week. It was yeah, this week. This yeah, week yeah. yeah, and um, it really hit different. Like it, Aww. yeah, because when it we, when often people get asked that question, you know, that people mm. get a little bit, you know, I don't know, shy mm. or, or nervous mm. to, to, mm. to express what they're um, mm. kind of chatting about. Yeah. And when you shared what you shared, I was like, man, yeah, that's so true. Because I'm kind of when you said it, like in a similar boat. Similar boat. Like mm. I was like, man, that's so true. So, do you want to share? Yeah. What your deepest fear is? Yeah. So. When we were talking on the show, um, and Brooke and Fame are like my older brothers, mm. literally like my older brothers. We hang out outside of Mahi and we get along really well. Yeah. And I think that's um, what has made the show really cool because we're able to be vulnerable with each other. Mm. And so when we're doing the show, it just feels like, you know, we're three mates having a good chat. Um, but when Brooke asked me off air, he goes, randomly, a couple of weeks ago, he goes, what's your deepest fear? Mm. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> and he was like, what's your deepest fear? And at the time, I, I d didn't really think about it because I was like, oh, I'm not sure. And then he goes, cool, well, we're going to talk about it on air. Yeah. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> and so he asked me on air and he was like, what, what's your deepest fear? And I said to him, 
my deepest fear that I've always had my whole life is wasted time and wasted potential. So I've always been really scared because I have wasted a lot of time Mm. on people who don't deserve it and toxic friendships and relationships and um, situations. But everything, you know, hindsight's a beautiful thing. Everything is a learning curve. And so my biggest fear is that, you know, when I pass on in, in my life and I go to the man upstairs or if you believe in the universe or whoever and you go up there and you get there and and he slides you across a piece of paper and he says to you oh well this is who I had planned for you to be Mm. you reach 10% of the 100% potential that I put in you what happened Mm. what'd you do I told you not to do these situations I handed you new people I handed you new experiences and you still didn't live to your potential yeah and I think that freaks me out because it's you've only got one life, and so wasting it on on situations that aren't needed is what a lot of us, especially myself, tend to do. So that was my biggest fear: is that you know I'll pass on and I'll not have reached my full potential. Yeah, it's pretty. Um, when you said that that part, when you gave that example of you know, I guess God, yeah, this example, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're passing you a slip. Mm. At 100%, you're only going to achieve 10%. Like, mm. that's what got me. Yeah. And um, I started thinking, like, shit, like, I'm scared of that too, to be honest. Like, yeah. yeah. And I didn't even know I was scared of that. Mm. You know what I mean? And it wasn't until you said it. Mm. And I was like, fuck. I think Alex <laughs> Alex hit something. You know what I mean? Like, I So was many like, people shit. were messaging me like, yeah. damn, like, I'm going to go for a run. And like, yeah. I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. now. And yeah. I was like, go, oh, you do that. Yeah, Which yeah. was really cool because it was just, you know, us having a chat. But that was the example that I saw. Because a lot of people, you know, when you see motivational quotes and shit, yeah. you're like, dumb. Yeah. Or you just kind of see it and you're like, mm, scroll, scroll, scroll. But yeah. when I heard that example and it was a girl talking about it like on a, like a vlog or like a YouTube vlog, I was mm. like, damn, like, she's right. Yeah. And then I kind of took it into my own hands and like reworded it of like, if you get up there and, and God says to you, what happened? Yeah. You'd be like, oh, damn, like I didn't realize I had that much potential. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And yeah. so that being your, your, your deepest fear then, um, or something you're scared of, mm. what are you going to do to to do certain things to make sure you do achieve 100%? Well, good question. Mm. Not be late. <laughs> you know what they say though Late people are ten, tend to be the most successful apparently. Oh St- say it louder statistically, for the people in the back yeah, Statistically <laughs> apparently Apparently there's research on that crap Oh I'm yeah, going yeah. to take that to the show today yeah, The yeah, boy's going to be like you're talking smack <laughs> um, No well I think For where I'm at right now And a lot of the time like when I said that example mm. And I watch a lot of I would watch watch a lot of Gary V and I watch a yep. lot of like motivational speakers and and things like that. And Gary V always says, "You can be twenty three, which I am now, yep. and still have ten years of your life to do absolutely nothing and still have enough time." Mm. And I've always been like, "Really? Mm. Like, do I have enough time?" But I fully believe that I am where I'm supposed to be right now and um, reaching my full potential. I think I've. I'm on track. I believe I'm on track. But like to do those those things, I think work hard is, mm. a, is a main thing. And when I when I work hard, it's like, you know, giving you all at mahi and the cliche shit that everyone says, like, says work that. hard and, you know, do the mahi, get the treats sort of thing. I've never said that in my life. Don't know why I said it now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think where I'm at right now and I, th- and I believe where people are at in their lives is where they need to be and the universe is trying to teach you a lesson within that moment mm. um, just to get all spiritual on you. <laughs> but, um, Amen. Yeah, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I believe like where I am right now is, is on good pathways. Yeah. Where I was three years ago, four years ago, nah. I mm. didn't never thought that I would be where I am today, yeah. four years ago. I honestly, four years ago, thought I was a loser. <laughs> and so, you know, where I am now, I'm like, yeah, I'm all right. Yeah. I can pay my rent. Yeah. It's a good day. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and that's something you should be proud of too, you know? And, um, yeah. Man, we're getting a little bit deep down and meaningful here. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it, it's true though, you know, mm. like um, yeah, exactly that. Like, you know, you four years, I'm exactly the same, like is, is a huge amount of time for you to be, you know, to to be able to self-develop mm. um and i'm like you I, i've recently only just started getting into gary v and stuff like that mm. you know and um only because I, I my favorite podcaster i reckon um or one of my favorite podcasters is us you know isaac john from oh, my ktr yes, and stuff yes. um i just think this, the type of stuff he says it's honest and it's brutal but it's true 
you know what I mean? Mm. Um, and he, he's very much the same as well. Like he, he says the exact same um, stuff that, you know, 10 years before in his life, you know, he didn't even have YKTR, but now mm. he does because obviously, you know, certain things don't go. Happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Things don't go to plan, but then eventually mm. uh, they come, you know, full circle and bang, you know. Yeah. So it's awesome that you've been able to do that stuff. So Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Wicked. Oh, that's nice. No, nah, cool. Um, so a little bit of my own question then. Okay. Not your deepest fear, mm. all right, but what are you most grateful for from the month of June? Ooh. It's, it was June last question. month, eh? It's July yeah. now, eh? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are you most grateful for from the month of June? Take a minute to dwell on this if you need yeah. to. What am yeah. I most grateful Because there's probably a lot of things. There are a lot of things. Mm. Mm. Or you could even list a few if you want to. Obviously having a job, like mm. in this day and age with COVID and, and everything that's going on, like I'm so grateful to have a job, have a roof over my head, <clears throat> all the basic necessities. But I think um, I'm probably most grateful for the struggles. So... It sounds okay. weird, but I'm a learner from when I make mistakes. I think a lot of people are too, Because I'm the type of person that's like, when I do situations or I do things, I'm like, yeah, it'll be fun, it'll yeah. be fine, yeah. like, we'll have a good time. And everyone's like, did you really think this through? I'm like, nah, but all good. And I go into things with my heart rather than my head. Mm. And so I go into things and I'm like, it'll be sweet. Like, everyone's got really good intentions. And I've learned working at my FM and working with Brook and Fame, who have actually helped me build up not walls, but like shields to defend myself mm. because I'm such a person that's like, oh, like he, he was really nice to me, so I'm sure it'll be all good and things like that. So I, I think I'm really grateful for, even though like, excuse my French, it's a mm. bitch mm. when you're in moments and you've got to struggle and you're learning about things and it really helps me learn about myself and where I need to be more self-aware and improve. Yeah. So I think the struggles and like, yeah, the arguments and the and the questioning and self doubt because yeah. that makes you want to learn more about oh why am I questioning myself or yeah. why do I have self doubt? Do you do you, do you often like get up in the morning and think like why, or do you you know throughout the day do you kind of question yourself like why do you have these self self doubt moments? Um, I think a lot of it stems from growing up. So growing up, yeah, my family was always kind of in, well, they we were always in the spotlight yeah, because of my dad. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you that, actually. Yeah, so yeah. my dad, who's my king, whatever, whatever. <laughs> Great dad, love yeah. you. Talk down on me. Oh, <laughs> love you, dad. But to me, he's just my dad. Yeah. He's not my king. Yeah. You know, he's not like the funny man, comedian back in the day, or, you know, mental health advocate, mm. even though both things, great at. But he's just my dad. Um and I think a lot of it stems from when you're, we were younger and, you know, growing up in the spotlight and seeing my dad succeed at a lot of things. Mm. People always knew about our lives and it was really weird to kind of grow up in that atmosphere because, you know, you're trying to grow up and be yeah. a kid and then you have people who know about you or know your dad and then they read about your family or the Herald has something written about my dad or Women's Day or whatever. And growing up, you're kind of like, oh, okay, so everyone knows who my dad is and I guess that's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm supposed to be somebody. Yeah. And so growing up with that in your mind, in the back of your mind, like, okay, well, the only way to success is to really be someone like my dad. And that's subconsciously what's carried with me for a really long time until I was able to digest what actually was the scenario and really understand the life that my dad lived wasn't all as it seems. Um, and so that's where a lot of self-doubt came from. Like, am I going to be like my dad? Am I going to be as good as my dad? Am I going to be as famous? And are people going to know who I am? Am I going to be a failure? And I think there's a lot of pressure without sounding like, oh, woe is me, like your dad's Mike King, whatever. Because <laughs> I know a lot of people will be like, oh, that's not bad. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, and it wasn't. It's not a bad thing at all. And I love my dad. But um, there's a certain expectation that I yeah. feel like people put on you subconsciously to be like, oh, okay, well, if you're Mike King's daughter, then what do you have yeah, to show for yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where a lot of my self-doubt came from. 
that I was never going to succeed as well as my dad mm. has. Mm. I mean, he's New Zealander of the year. I'm never yeah. going to get fucking New Zealander of the year. <laughs> like, come on. Hey, you never know. You never know. <laughs> come on. Come on. You never Back know. Yourself. Yeah. Back yourself. Back <laughs> yourself. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's where a lot of the self-doubt came from yeah. for myself. And I can speak for my siblings a lot of the time is that our self-doubt came from like, we need to be as good, if not better than our dad. And so that's where I'm kind of always compared myself to and at the end of the day I'm like damn I'm 23 yeah I'm doing all right I'm on the radio mm. <laughs> yeah people know you oh, yeah. yeah people know me for botsing spelling <laughs> and not speaking correctly um but yeah that's where a lot of the self-doubt came from really yeah. Well, I was going to ask you that too because, um, you know, a lot of people would probably see that your father, you know, being mm. the person that he is, you know, a New Zealand icon in a way, mm. uh, you know, you do have some type of expectation to meet, mm. you know, in, in, in a certain sense. But at the same time, I don't think you do, you know, like as long as you, you know, let people know that this is what you're doing, mm. you know, and it seems like that's what you are doing, mm. you know, so. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I think it's just a lot of it, like I said before, is yeah. subconscious. Like a lot of it has to do with me overanalyzing, overthinking, like, is this what I should be doing? Is this what people expect of me? When it's like, who cares at the end of the day, if you're satisfied within yourself, Mm. then it doesn't really matter. And I know that my dad's always been proud of me. Even when I've tried to like sway from the entertainment business for a long time, it was like a tug of war between me and my dad that I was like, nah, like I'm not going to. I'm going to go do something completely different just to get away from that realm because I've had that my whole life Mm. and I know about it and I know the good and the bad. So I'm all good. Like, I'm going to go do this and you go do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you think that's why you've kind of um, fallen into this type of industry that you're in now? Like, because of that whole scenario? Like, you're around that um, kind of your whole life in in a way, you know? Like, even to to today, Mm. you're still around it, Mm. you know, in, in a sense, so... Can I answer that question after I blow my nose? Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Okay, hundred percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can do that. No worries. Where's the bathroom? Go, go through there. Okay. Go through that um, I mean, door. You'll see a toilet. Keep sniffing. I'm like that's yeah. so boring. No, no, no. Go right, straight there. See there? Oh, no, straight there. And turn to your right. Yeah, yeah. A few moments later. Um. Well. Sorry, there's music playing in the background. Um. That's a good question. Well, I have to kind of start from the beginning, which is lengthy, but I will. So throughout my schooling years, I went to a private school um, and my whole life I kind of did music and drama and I was always that kid at school Mm. and I was always like the music drama kid and you'd always find me at the performing arts centre at lunch and morning tea and I didn't really have many friends and... I kind of found myself at a school that didn't really favour brown girls or their cultures. Okay. Um, there was maybe like 10 of us in my year. Mm. And I always found myself that I wasn't brown enough to hang out with the brown girls, but I wasn't white enough to hang out with the white girls. So I found myself always just hanging out by myself. And so performing arts and drama was where I would kind of like find myself and so through schooling dad and mom had always known that that was going to be what I was going to do and so when I came to leave uni I mean school sorry um I was like okay well everyone else is going to uni like that's what you do at this prestigious private school is that you go to school get good grades and then you go to uni if you want to be successful and so I was like damn like and that's implemented in you as soon as you get to that school. Yeah. And the implications from that, like I don't think I'll ever send my child to that school, but right. that's another story. <laughs> um, okay. Do you want to name the school or not? Oh, yeah. So I went to St. Cuth's, which is like a, a private school in Auckland. Okay. Um, and very prestigious. Like I came from a small school with like 200 kids up north, co-ed. Wow. And my mum was the deputy principal at that school, so – Tuck oh, shop okay. um, was on because yeah. I would just charge it to my mum's account. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so then when I went to that school, it was like 1,200 girls and like wow. real, like. Oh, so single sex school? Yeah, single sex school right, gotcha. and um, uniforms were like blazers and yeah. like tea bars and yeah. tartan and it was like the whole nine yards. Yeah. And so, yeah, performing arts and music was what I, I loved to do because it was fun and it was the only thing that I really understood my whole life. Um, and other subjects I never really excelled in 
because I just didn't like them. Yeah. Um, and so when it came to leaving school, I was like, okay, like I could do drama and performing arts, but I know that if I do that, that's the avenue that I'm going to go down, um, which is going to be like entertainment and things like my dad. Mm. And when I was in high school, it was a, a time when my dad was kind of airing out his own demons and he was on his own waka and he was finding himself again. And so I had seen the bad side of the media. And as a 15-year-old girl, you're like, holy fuck. Like, mm. nah, I don't want to be on the front page of the Herald one day because yep. I'm airing out my demons. Mm. Fuck that. Mm. Nah. And so – and I remember going to school one day and my dad had just um, gone out and told everyone that he used to be an alcoholic and all the, the whole nine yards. And it was on the front page of the Herald. And I remember going to school that day and my drama teacher goes, oh, I read about your dad in the news. And I was like, okay, mm. like, I haven't. And so my whole life I was like, why do all these people know about my life before I even yeah, you can need, comprehend yeah. what the hell's going on? Mm. And so when th that kind of happened to me throughout my whole life, I was like, nah, like that's, I don't want that. And so when it came to leaving school, I was like, cool, I'm going to go do law. And oh my, my dad God. was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> law? Yeah. You didn't even like writing. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I do. Shut up. Like, <laughs> I'm all good. <laughs> and he's like, okay, well, where are you going to go do law then? And I was like, Wellington. <laughs> Furthest away from you. Yeah. And he was like, Wellington, what the hell is in Wellington? Nothing, nothing, buddy, in Wellington. Go to bloody Toy Ficati. And I was like, no, Dad, I'm not going to go to drama school. And he's like, we had planned this. This is what you're going to do. You're going to leave school and you're going to go to drama and you're going to go to music and you're going to do something. And I said, well, maybe I want to change our plan. Yeah. And for a really long time, he was not into it. He was like, nah, like I don't really give you my blessing to go. Wow. And my mum did because my mum's all about, yeah. you know, she's a, teacher so she's like oh this is great news you know that entertainment stuff oh it's <laughs> no good yeah great go to law and then my dad was like nah and so when I finally left for law he had given me his blessing he's like look if this is what you want to do I support you and I'm so proud of you and I was like thanks because it is and I never really told him why I wanted to go to law yeah. and he's never really known so if he watches this then maybe he'll know but yeah I kind of um I wanted to get so far away from that just because I had seen so much bad. Mm. And then, anyways, went to go do law, lasted a year. And I loved it, but I did not have the grades that you needed. Right. You needed like A plus, 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 plus. And I was a B, B minus student at best. Yeah. And I loved it. And it was really fun. Um, and then when I went to go back for the second year of, of law, I couldn't end up finding a flat. And so I was kind of like stuck down in Wellington. And at the time, no one knows this either, but at the time I was staying with my toxic ex-boyfriend yeah. at his flat knowing he was playing up on me. <laughs> Exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> knowing he yeah. was like fully playing up on me. Mm. But because I was at such a turmoil, like I need to find a flat, I don't have anywhere to live. And I saw everyone kind of excelling in their subjects and I was like damn, like I'm not really, I'm like just average. Like I'm not really doing anything. Like I'm kind of studying, but I like it, but I don't like it. And anyways, I ended up not being able to find a flat. And I remember the day I couldn't find a flat, I like called my dad and I was in tears and I was like, I can't find a flat. It's like three days till uni started. And he was like, come home. And I was like, I don't want to come home. Like he's like, if you want to do law, you can transfer up here next, next semester, mm. but come home. And I remember him saying, the universe always has a reason for what they're doing. And I believe your reason is because you're not supposed to be there. Mm. You're not supposed to be doing this. And life is going to hand you another pathway. And at the time, I was like, bro, stuff you. I don't want, I don't want your TED talk right now. Okay? <laughs> Just help me, man. I want a flat. Help me. And he was like, he did. And he did try to help me. He tried and asked all his friends in Wellington and no one had flats available. Like it was like the universe was like, nah, well, you're mm -hmm. not going to stay here. Hindsight, beautiful thing. I'm so glad I didn't stay there because my ex-boyfriend definitely would have ruined my life. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and funnily enough, weirdly enough, my dad was in Wellington that day for a meeting. And so he came and picked me up personally in his Uber. Wow. And we flew home that day. And I remember I was like, 
damn, bro, like, I'm a loser. Like, this is what it's gotten. Like, my dad's had to come pick me up from uni like a little girl and I have nowhere to live and and the people that I was supposed to live with kind of, like, threw me out. So we did actually find a flat. But there was five of us and we only found, like, a four-bedroom place. And they kind of said to me, like, you can have the lounge. Oh. And I was like, nah, like, I don't want the lounge. And, yeah, so then, anyways, my dad had picked me up and I just, like, man, like, all these friends had kind of thrown me out and I wasn't going back to do law and I saw all my friends having fun and I just remember like I'm living at my dad's house yeah. after going to this prestigious private school and I was like, what a loser. And so for a really long time, there was a lot of turmoil in me to be like, what am I going to do? So I got a retail job. I started working retail and um, hated it. Like, mm. I hated it. Like, you have to give mad props to anyone who works in retail yeah. and hospi- hospitality because yeah. all my days, yeah. the people and the people skills you have to have, like, I was like, nah. Anyway, so I kind of, um, that was kind of my way of being like, I want to go do something else. Like, I don't want to be in entertainment. And the universe had another plan. They were like, nah, well, like, you're gonna, this is what you're going to do. Mm. And so... I started doing a, an acting course, which my dad was like, come on, like my friend does this acting course, it'd be really good for you. I was like, I don't want to do a stupid acting course. <laughs> and so I ended up going and I loved it and it was 80 weeks and it was so fun and I met some amazing friends that are still my friends to this day. Yeah. And I remember in that acting course was a lady called Sarah Gandhi, shout out to Sarah Gandhi, um, who worked at a different radio station at the time and she was a breakfast announcer. And she mm-hmm. goes, oh, you'd be really good at um, being a promo girl. I was like, what's a promo girl? Mm. She's like, oh, you know, like you drive the cars and you hand out prizes for radio stations. And I was like, hell yeah, like me, awesome. And so she kind of set me up with um, my boss who worked at our rival station (laughs) that is a rival to my FM, also plays hip hop and R&B. And I went there for a promo girl job and I ended up not getting the job. Right. And I remember going back to acting class. She goes, oh, how did how did your interview go? And I was like, oh, I don't think the promo lady liked me because I didn't get the job. Mm. She was like, oh, what the hell? Anyways, about a month had gone by and I got an email from that boss at the time, from that radio station. And he goes, hey, like, Sarah's passed me on her details and she said, like, you'd be really keen to give something a go. Like, let's meet up. Mm. And I remember I was like, yes. Like, finally I had something because I was working – real shit hours and studying on the side and I yeah. had no idea what I wanted to do and I was like, cool. And so I went to go to the interview and I remember he goes, sweet, so we're just going to chuck you in here and you can do a voice break and give it a go. Mm. What? He's like, you want to talk on the radio, right? <laughs> and I was like, nah. And he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, I mean, yes, I do. But I thought I was here for like, you know, promo jobs. And he was like, oh, nah, Sarah said that you don't ever shut up. So <laughs> go in there and, you know, give it a go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember listening back to like my first break when I worked at that place. And it was like, hey, guys. Yeah, I'm so excited. Like yelling into the mic. Like over the top. Yeah, OTT. Because mm. I thought, you know, that that's what you did in radio. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, he must have seen something. Yeah. He was like, yeah, cool. Like, do you want to do a Sunday shift on here? And I was like. Yes, which I was so grateful for because he kind of just handed it to me and I know that that never happens. Yeah. And so I'm really, really grateful for that opportunity. Anyways, ended up doing two years as their weekend announcer. And then in my third year, I was their day's announcer. So I did Mm. nine till three. Mm. And I saw myself going down a similar path that, you know, my dad had gotten into, and I remember, he was actually the first person I interviewed on that show. Oh, true. He was my very first interview, Yo. which is funny. And it's really good because he interviews himself. Yeah, He yeah, yeah, asks yeah, yeah. the question and then yeah. he answers it. <laughs> so uh, it was easy breezy. Yeah. And anyway, so I remember when I got that job and then um, after the year was up, it was kind of like, yeah, there were some things that happened and um, I decided it was my time to move on. Um and I, at that point in my life, when I was about to move on, I was really unhappy. And I remember saying to my dad, I was like, look, like, I'm so unhappy. Mm. I don't want to work at this job anymore. Put me in retail. Like, I'll do marketing. I will do anything. I will go back. Going back? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was like, stick it out for another month. And yeah. if you still feel this way, 
then we'll look at other options. Mm. And I was like, okay. Stuck it out for a month, still really unhappy. And I remember I said to him, I was like, I'm out. Like, I don't care what I do, but I'm out. Mm. And I thought at that point, I was like, damn, like, I had my foot in the door yeah. for something that was always planned for me, I suppose, entertainment and things like that. And then I was like, but maybe it wasn't. And in the back of my mind at that point, I was like, see, told you, bro. Like, yeah, this was yeah, not yeah. meant for me. <laughs> I tried it. I did what you asked and still wasn't meant for me. And there was a lot of internal turmoil at that time in my life because I was like, fuck, like, man, I just got my foot in the door and people knew that I was working at the station and mm. it was really fun. And then all this shit happened and I was like, I'm out. Yeah. And I'd started to see like, the other side of the media at that point mm. because of the things that I won't ever disclose what happened, but because of the things that had happened at that radio station, I was like, nah, like I'd seen people turn on me and, you know, things happen and just how media can handle situations. Yeah. How we were talking about it before. Right? Yeah. Bit, yeah. Yeah. Sways it. Yes. Yeah, sways yeah. it. And sway. They don't really, <laughs> they don't really give, they can excuse my French, but they don't give a fuck a lot of the time. Mm. Especially women. Yeah, women yeah, yeah. Are, are really done by in this industry. Mm. And um, a lot of the women that I know are the hardest working ones in the group. And so when I saw that, I was like, yeah, nah, I'm out. And at that time, I had told a few people that I was going to resign. And um, I had told my dad's manager that I was going to resign. And he goes, okay, well, leave it with me and I'll just spread the word. Because in radio, jobs hardly ever come up. Because no. you see a show stick together for like... Ages, eh? Ages, because yeah. you're trying to get yeah. the chemistry and then you build an audience and then, you know, you build a whānau around you and people love that show and so it hardly ever changes. Ever cha yeah, yeah. That's so true because I, I'm, my favourite show growing up um, was um, Salah and Poor. Um, mm, and then, mm. like, I love their vibe. Cracker. They, yeah, mm. they're funny. They had some funny, like, um, what's it called? Uh, not scenes, but like, you know, um, ideas, topics, you know, concepts on their show. And it's Someone so true. Like, great. I would listen to them every single day on the way to school. Yeah. Because, because I, like, I just connected with mm. them, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. And now it's changed, obviously, you know, because they're not around. <clears> yeah. And, and that was the thing. I was like, well, I'm not going to get a job in radio. Yeah. Like, I know that that's not going to come up. And so I'd kind of checked out at that point in my life. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I knew that that was kind of the end of my little stint. Yeah. I was like, oh, well, it was fun. <laughs> it's been real. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> back to marketing I go. Yeah. <laughs> Told you I should have stayed in law, Dad. <laughs> yeah, bastard. And... Randomly, my dad's manager calls me. He's like, hey, like, <clears throat> there's an opportunity for you to work at my FM. Wow. And I was like, you're joking. Mm. I'll be weekends girl. I'll do promo, whatever it is. Give me the job. Yep. Had heaps of meetings and trials and ended up landing the job. Um, and my boss at the time, and he hates when people know that he's a boss, but I'm just going to say it. Nixon, who does My Morning Crew, was my yeah. boss at that time. Mm. So he was the one who hired me. So this is going back a couple of years ago? Yeah, like 2019. Ago? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. End of 2019. And, um, or was it 2018? Mm. Or oh, one of them. <laughs> and, yeah, he had hired me at the time, and um, it was... Wild, and so that's how I kind of got back into the industry. Yeah. But for a really long time, I thought to myself, like, shame, like, especially yeah. when all that shit happened at the other radio station. I was like, shame, dad, like, you said that the universe has a plan. Well, mm. the plan's to go back to law, yeah. you know, like, and then I kind of had set my sails on being like, okay, well, I'm gonna work at a office job, office job. and yeah. yeah, that's kind of where it, it got to. So now that I'm here. I'm so grateful. Yep. It has been a journey to grateful. get here. Grateful. So grateful. Um, and me, Brooke and Fame have had many a scraps, <laughs> many a arguments, but I love them and I'm, and I'm really grateful. And I don't say this en enough because they hate when I compliment them. But really a lot of the time I believe that Brooke and Fame were like saviours in my life. Yeah. 
Have you told them that to their face? Oh, yeah. And yeah, they're yeah. all like, oh, yeah, yeah, da, 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 da. yeah, whatever. And make a joke about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, do, they right? hate compliments. Yeah. But really, and I've told Brooke this, but because he's, Brooke's like my legitimate older brother. Mm. Fame's like my, again, older brother, but he's like your favorite cousin that you haven't seen for ages, the uh, family reunion. Okay. And every time you see him, you're like, it's going to be a good time. <laughs> and that's Fame. Because me and Fame, we chat outside of, well, I tried to text him and he doesn't reply. <laughs> But Brooke's the guy that I call if I've got a flat tire. I'm like, Brooke, help oh, me. Oh, true. Or if I don't know how to do something with my car, Brooke, help me. Yeah. And he's that guy. And so he has, um, both of them have helped me through tremendous, like, everything really. So yeah, yeah. Downfalls, very grateful. Downfalls, so ups, many. Ups. Yeah. Downs again. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, just really grateful for them. But now that I'm in this industry and I've mm. seen both sides, um, I wouldn't change it for the world. But definitely, like, it's tough. Yeah. And I know when people watching this are like, bro, you speak for four hours on the radio. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> You're not out here digging holes, okay? And I'm not. Like, oh, man, and I could not do that. Yeah. But it's like the behind the scenes that people don't really understand of, like, mm. constant judgment and constant criticism and people saying you suck and your music sucks and <laughs> <laughs> you sound hoary on the radio. <laughs> oh, my mean, brother. <laughs> Cheers. So, yeah, I mean, grateful that I'm here, but, man, it's tough. Yeah, when you when you when you actually spoke about um that rivalry you had, mm-hmm. um, do you want to name the other radio station or not? Should we just keep nah, it no, 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 no. You, you, we you already get know. The gist. Yeah, 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 yeah. People, people should know this. They but play old school hip hop yeah. in Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when you're talking about rivalry, is it real? Like, is is there nah, actually rivalry? Nah. Is it just like just so like you're just obviously competing for listeners? A lot of people always ask me this. They're like, so what did um, what was it? Their name. Yeah. What did they think when you left? And at the time, it was sensitive. Like, it was a touchy subject because of what had gone on behind the scenes. Mm. Um, and everyone was really confused. Yeah, the people that I used to work with. And, you know, I had some really great friendships there. And I'm very grateful for that time in my life. Mm. But the rivalry that we have today, th- it, <laughs> people think that there's a rivalry. There really isn't. Like, we had radio awards maybe a month ago now. Yeah. And Storm. Who I, I love Storm. Shout out to Storm. Um, messaged me and he was like, hey, like, we're going to have a boat race. You're my messenger. Tell everyone. Like, put it in the group chat. And so we re- we get along really, really well now. Oh, so cool. both of us together as a collaborative, like, we're really good. Mm. But I think at the time when I left, it was a touchy subject yeah. for everyone. Um, but no, I'm really grateful for the friendships that I made at that station and for a lot of the friendships I still have today. And... Um, yeah, everyone, we all still really get along, so it's it's yeah. it's real cool. But we pretend like we've got a rival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. so that people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But we really don't, and yeah. we all get along really well, and we hang out, and yeah. yeah. I think I think the best thing, um, I know, you, I mean, we say rivalry, but um, like you just said, but um, I think the best thing about having competition, it brings the best out of you, you know? For and, sure. And I think that's what brings the best out of um, you know, both both radio stations. Mm. I mean, every single radio station out there, mm. you know, it's mm. like you're always going to be challenged to do something better, find find other you know creative ideas, you know, yeah. to to bring to the table. Yeah, and I think that's what pushes them. I know, and yeah. that's what pushes us as well. Is that you know we're both trying to just be entertaining and exactly. give people what they want and play good music. And yep. at the end of the day, radio is the winner. <laughs> Most definitely. I know people. <laughs> Oh, say more, man. I can't say anymore. Yeah. But radio is the winner at the end of the day, Fano. <laughs> yeah, they're probably like, dog someone, dog someone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what happened. <laughs> Tell us what happened. Uh, maybe DM uh, Alex. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't maybe. DM me. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us the truth. <laughs> no, literally, they're going to be like, dumb. <laughs> what do you mean? But no, yeah. now when we see each other out, it's always really nice. Good vibes. Good vibes yeah. and positive and Vibe-y. we've all moved on from it. So, yeah. yeah. Carpo. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, um, now you do um often talk about your dad, and we've been talking about him a little bit as well. Yeah. Just to quickly touch on him as, and stuff. Um, mm. obviously, I know he's a, a massive, you know, advocate for mental health and stuff like that. Um, obviously, he's been an actor in the past, comedian as well. Um, Has he been an actor? Well, I think so. Like he's done a, I mean, I should say TV, radio, presenting shows. I actually know he has been in a movie before. Oh, okay. But I've cool. never watched that movie. Oh, right. Apparently, he was in a scrap in the movie. Like he had to do a fight scene, and that's, he got beaten up. That's not um, what's it called? Oh, frick. What's the name of it? Oh, no, I'm going to sit here for like... Yeah, I don't know the name of it. 30 minutes not knowing But I remember him going to see it every day and he's like, yeah, I'm going to meet a fight like, scene. Hey. I was like, hey, oh, yo. sorry. Maddie, but we yeah. can find this fight scene. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, man, he's, mm. a, he's a massive adv- uh, advocate for, for mental health. Mm. Um, most recently, he just did the, the Gumboot Friday t- um, mm-hmm. stuff. I think mm-hmm. it was in the last uh, month or so eh, mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, I just want to know how, mu- how much did he actually end up um, fundraising do you, if you... They were trying to get $100,000. Okay. Did and we did get $100,000. Man. Wow. That's a lot of money. Yeah, Jeez. it is a lot of money. For, for dad, <laughs> dad will always say like, that's not enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, my, my dad's such a harsh critic on himself. Yeah. And I know like my dad wanted to raise millions of dollars, mm. but um, with COVID and things like that. So normally the first Gumboot Friday that we did, my dad and his team and us, we they rode scooters from the bottom of New Zealand all the way to the top. And that was wow. circa 2019 or 2018. Bottom of New Zealand to the top. Yeah. Holy on scooters. Shit. Yeah. Electric scooters. Rain, okay. yeah. Rain, hail, shine. Oh, or like the little ones that you sit on, like the little oh, mopeds. 50. Yeah, mopeds. 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 Oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, and so rain, hail, shine. Wow. And that took a month. Jeez. Um, and on the way, Dad did talks throughout everywhere that we stopped. Uh, so okay. every time that we stopped, Dad would always have a talk. Oh, you did it with him? Yeah, yeah. So I did oh. the f- the last two weeks. Okay. So I did the North Island. I didn't mm. do the South Island. Um, I did the last two weeks with Dad, and we drove cars behind them and made sure that they were all good. And yeah. It was a lot. Jeez. And I saw my dad go through it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm so proud of him for being able to do that. Mm. But yeah, it was a, it was a long month, and um, my stepmom Joe was there as well with my little sister Charlie and it was a lot for our family Mm. to go through um but worth it yeah totally worth it for the money that dad was raising and then the last day um or sorry a couple days later we did gumboot friday which was like this big event and you come down you wear gumboots and Mm. it was a hit and then 2020 obviously when we had covid they tried to do it again on tractors yeah. and they had to stop halfway through. Oh. So we got halfway and um, they had to cancel because of COVID and everything, mm. which my dad was gutted for. Mm. Um, and so this year- Still the same? South Island to the North Island? Yeah. Oh, right. On tractors mm. this time. Yeah. And so they only got halfway and they had to cancel it. And so then this year, dad was like, look, stuff it. I'll just do something in Auckland. Yeah. And so he tried to walk 100,000 kilometres for 100k. Yeah, because I, I was going to say, how, how far did he end up walking? He fell like 30 kilometres short Okay. because his leg, like when I went to go see him that day, Mm. um, he had blisters all up his feet and he was tired and he was constantly doing interviews. And so when I tried to interview him for my show, Mm. I was like, hey dad, I'm here down here. Classic dad, like being a joker, (laughs) not really answering the bloody questions. questions. (laughs) But um, yeah, so he fell like 30 kilometres short, but. Man, like he really is out there and yeah. he really is trying to make a change and, and I am hope as an establishment are really doing amazing thing, things for our tamariki mm. and um, my dad has saved so many lives and yeah, it's really awesome to talk about that and say like, you know, that that's my dad. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah. Was that, did awesome. I answer your question? Well, how much he raised? Oh yep. yeah, yeah. And long story short, no, you did. I think you, no, 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 you did, you did. But also, quickly shout out to to um one of the, I think it was like a masseuse or physiotherapist there, Gareth. I don't know if you know. Yes, who he is. Gareth. Yeah. Gold standard. <coughs> but yeah, the bro. Um, but he was the bro that that helped out. Your yeah, dad he was strapping dad's feet. Yeah, poor Gareth. And, and made your dad just swear like a thousand times. Oh when yeah, massage, yeah, know? yeah. Poor Gareth, man. Like <laughs> dad, go, fuck. <laughs> And Gareth's like, it's don't all touch good, it. brother. It's all good. It's all good. Massaging his yuck ass feet. So <laughs> shout out to Gareth. Yes, he was really lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. Oh, awesome. Well, I'm really happy that he, um, I guess, achieved what he what he kind of set out to, or partly achieved, um, in a way. In but my dad's eyes, he's he never finished. Yeah. And he's never really achieved what he's wanted to. Mm. And so, with everything that's going on now with the government, they tried to get funding. Mm. I am allowed to talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. He posted on his Instagram. <laughs> he tried to get funding from the government for Gumboot Friday yeah. because they know that the success it's it's broad and 100% of the proceeds go to counsellors. So dad gets none of that money. Right. The, the charity gets none of it. Dad's charity covers the admin costs. Right. So they pay for that out of their own pocket. Um, and then, yeah, that 100K goes straight to the counsellors. I got Straight you. for kids counselling, which mm. goes like that. Mm. Because the wait list to go through the government is out the gate. Yeah. And so dad's fund just gets chewed up because there's so many kids that need it. Uh, okay. And so that's why dad wanted to get like a million, two Mini- million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in that first Gumboot Friday, pretty sure we raised a million, 2019. Wow. Wow. And it lasted half a year mm. and it was gone. Jeepers. 
So 100K, like dad's like, yeah, that's mean. Thank you. But we need way more. So my dad's eyes, he's never really finished. Mm. And I don't think my dad will ever, he's, yeah. He won't stop. Nah. Nah. No. Nah. He'll keep going. Yeah. Yeah. To like get lunch with that man's bloody hard enough. Yeah. He's, oh, I'm I'm busy. Which is understandable. Mm. But yeah, I think in his eyes, he's always kind of like, I need to do more. Yeah, yeah. Has he been on the podcast? I don't think he does podcasts. He says he never has time to do a podcast. I reckon you should ask him. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> networking, for sure. Networking. Hard out. That's actually what I was grateful for from for June was networking. Mm. That that's what I was most grateful for. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, legit. I just thought about it and I was like, yeah, that's actually, nice. networking is is. I met you. I yes. met a few other people that that um actually a good uh, really um a compliment that that I received was um. <laughs> Coming obviously because I'm new to Mount Albert Lions mm. this year and stuff, and um, up the uh, Mount Albert Lions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let it be known. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I got a, I got a really nice comment from uh, one of our trainers, Sturmy, and um, he came up to me and said, "Man, one thing I really appreciate you, you know, because you're new here, is is you actually make the effort to to come around and, and greet the boys, like mm. every individual, even mm. their partners, and even the coaching staff, and um, mm. you know, some of the sponsors and stuff like that, mm. um, and." Because I kind of pride myself on that stuff, you mm. know, like I think it's really important. So that's one thing I actually am grateful for is, is networking. So, yeah. Because nice. we wouldn't have had this, you know. Yes, if, of course. If, if we didn't network. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, Good on you. Know, you. Yeah, so that's what I'm grateful for. Yeah, yeah. But hey, I do have a question for you. Okay. <laughs> Another one. Oh, the thousand that I wish I could ask you. But <laughs> <laughs> I got two questions. But okay. the first one, let's answer this one mm. real quick. I heard you tried or you, um, what's the word? Question. You applied. Mm hmm. For the role of Moana. Yeah. How did that go? How far did you go? How did you find out about this? No, yes. <laughs> um, I know how you found out. <laughs> Thank you. Um, media, media, media. Mm. <laughs> yep, so I did. So in the time when I was before working at my previous radio station, I was like auditioning heaps and I didn't really know what to do. And I auditioned for, auditioned for Moana. And I reckon I botched that audition. And every audition that I've botched, they've really liked. Mm. Every audition that I thought I was really good in, eh. <laughs> they've been like, yeah, you're right. So when I went to audition, it was like a huge process because it's Disney. And um, <clears throat> went into the uh, the room and they had like a massive green screen. Was it here or over there? Here. Oh, it was here it? in New Zealand, oh, wow. yep. Massive green screen. And they were like, cool, so you're going to be up on this rock and, like, you're saving this boat and, like, you just have to act the whole thing out. And yes. I've never done, like, animation or green screen work before. Yeah. And I was like, what do you mean? And so I'm getting up there and I'm, like, pretending like I'm Moana and I'm like, da-da-da, and then they make you sing. And then I sung my song and whatever, whatever. Do you remember the song? Uh, I think I sung Hallelujah at the time. Did they something. give you a song to choose? No, 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 no. They no, get, no, they, no they said that you just need to come with the song. To sing. Oh, okay. So yeah, okay. so I got to pick the own, my own song. I think it was like Hallelujah at the time. Mm. And um, I sung the song. I thought I botched it, honestly. <laughs> and Christina Asher, who was the casting director at the time, um, she, who's so beautiful, and she was like, "Oh, great!" You know, hugged me and everything. And I kind of wanted to cry because I was like, "Man, like I stuffed up so bad." Yeah. Anyways, left and like a couple of weeks had passed and I get a call from Christina and she's like, hey, like I didn't have an agent at the time. And she goes, hey, you need an agent because mm-hmm. Disney really like you. Mm. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. And so I remember telling my dad and finally got an agent and then, yeah, so I had heaps of Skype calls with Disney and calls with Disney and, you know, talking about things and they had drawn me as Moana. Wow. She looks weirdly like Moana. Oh wow! But anyways, I digress. <laughs> um, and they missed a good one. Um, yeah, so I didn't get to meet the girl that got it because yeah. um, she was from Hawaii. Mm. Um, but yeah, heaps of uh, FaceTimes and Skypes and you know talking with them and back and forths and ended up obviously I didn't get the role, mm. but yeah, I was close to close. being Moana. Yeah. <laughs> so this leads to my second question. Yeah. Now this is more around your singing and uh, stuff. Yeah. It, were you actually on on like X Factor or like New Zealand Idol or some crap? Because I seen this oh on the no. news, eh? Because I seen it and I seen your dad happy no, as no, <laughs> you were out there. No, no. What was that? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this video haunts me. <laughs> and I you have were young tried. In that, eh? Yeah, I was like thirteen, maybe. Oh jeez. 
and I have tried so many times personally myself to go on YouTube and be like, report, inappropriate <laughs> content, report. And it's never gotten taken down and it haunts me. And I, so, yeah, so I did New Zealand's Got Talent. Was it New Zealand's Got Talent? Yeah, New Zealand's Got been. Talent. Yeah. And I mean, because the pre- preliminary um, stuff you have to go through is like, it's like a, they hold it on like a Sunday. Mm. And so you audition to audition. Mm. And I remember waiting for like hours and I think my friend... Rebecca, I want to say Rebecca McRae, was like, I'll come with you. And we waited in line for hours on a Sunday. And I got into the room, I sang Etta James at last. And on like this, it was like a room like the, as big as this. And they're like, next. <laughs> and then they come in and you give them the CD and they play it in this like hoary little boombox thing. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, cool, sing. And then I sung. And they were like, okay, cool, thanks. We'll be in touch. And oh I was gosh. like, you wait like, hours for that yeah and I was like what do you mean like anyways got an email and um yeah I got the audition and so I remember the week leading up to it I was so sick so mm. when I was really young because I had tonsillitis a lot and I hadn't had my tonsils out yet mm. or maybe I had one or the other but I was really susceptible to getting sick mm. and I remember the Monday the audition was like the Thursday or the Friday I was so sick And I was like, I can't do it. And I remember, got to Tuesday, Wednesday, had the antibiotics, still wasn't better. And I woke up that Thursday morning and I was crying, I was crying. And I said to my dad, like, I don't think I can do this. Like, I can't sing. Because I went to go sing at Adele's Chasing Pavements. Oh, wow. Adele. Adele. (laughs) Who does she think she is? (laughs) Anyway, so I went to go sing, yeah, that song. Mm. And my dad said to me, he goes, look, we either go and I load you up on antibiotics Mm. and paracetamol and we just gargle shit in your throat for three hours or we don't go at all. Yeah. There's no crying about it. Cause my dad's always been that, that tough love parent. Yeah. 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 My dad, I remember when I was like eight, I really wanted to do New Zealand, New Zealand Idol. Uh. And I really wanted to sing. And I remember crying and begging my dad, please, please, please. And my dad is that parent that you, cause you know, when you watch X Factor and then they like bots it completely and you're like, what family member doesn't love you that let you go up there and do that? (laughs) Like if that was my family, they'd be like, what the hell? (laughs) No, we ain't doing that. Okay. You're not going to go up there and embarrass yourself in front of the nation. Yeah. And so I remember when I was eight, I was begging my dad. I was like, please, please, please. And he came into my room and he laid down next to me and he was like, look, I just don't think you're ready. Mm. You're eight. Like, and I'm so grateful that he didn't let me do that. Um, And then, yeah, so Showed up at the audition with my dad and I was so sick. Like, I remember picking up clothes off my floor and like I had mince and cheese streaks in my hair, like barely brushed my hair, mm. TV ready. <laughs> and um, yeah, went to go do the audition and uh, luckily they liked it and I got through. But I remember telling my dad after, I was like, nah, I don't think I want to do it. Yeah. And he's like, oh, what do you mean? <laughs> like, nah, I don't really want to do it. And so I didn't continue on doing it which I'm grateful for because that would have haunted me even more mm. till this day. But, um, yeah, it's funny how things work out. But, yeah, I did audition. Please don't look it up. <laughs> Everyone's going to go look it up. Well, that kind of leads us on to singing, I guess, eh? Hey? Mm. And, like, you know, you've mm. got a bit of a background in that. Obviously, you released it. Is it a single? It's yeah. a single, way. Eh? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you released your single most recently. That was this year, eh? When It's Over. Yes. It is, eh? Yeah, so that was this year. Over. Was it this year? Yeah. Was it in last yeah. year? No, okay, this year. It was this year. All right. So um, let's talk about that, man. But um, yeah, has singing always come naturally to you or, or what? what so or was it something you got taught? I'm that kid when you go to the Marae. Yeah. Um, oh, and, yeah. you know, your nana and auntie are like, yeah. kia ora, Bob. Yeah. How am I? Uh, Alex is going to sing for us. I'm like, what are you going to sing for you? <laughs> I haven't even met you. <laughs> and so anyways, I was always that kid growing up. And for my family, I was always that one that had to tow to why to tow took everyone and blah 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 and so singing um yeah has always been like a a thing of mine and um heaps of people when I worked in radio didn't even know that I sung because I wasn't one yeah I don't like singing on I find it weird when people talk about me and like I'm on my show and then they're like your song and I'm like oh man it's a little bit cringe well not even I knew until you released that that single and yeah and um and so I have always worked on music my whole life, but it wasn't, it kind of always took the back burner because of things that have happened mm. um, with radio and, and mahi and things like that and acting. And so I kind of never really got into it, but I have done vocal lessons since I was six. Yeah. Um, and so, 
Yeah, it was something that my family always, always prided me on. And I remember my first vocal coach, she, I was six at the time, she goes, oh, I, I don't really take people that aren't below, uh, that aren't eight and above. I remember I sung for her and she was like, okay, cool, not to blow my own home, horn, God. <laughs> but she was like, yep, yeah, okay, cool. So, and I remember I was so grateful because she was like one of the best vocal coaches I've ever had. And from then on, I've had amazing vocal coaches my whole life, but it was just something that I never really decided that I want to go down especially when I've done acting my whole life as well yeah. and I kind of thought oh I mean like I'll just settle on acting and I can be that like subpar cousin that brings up the the guitar and has a wiser than I like I'm all good with that <laughs> and so then when I was doing the show we have a show coach and his name's Jason Royal massive shout out to Jace um and he said to me he was like look I love you but I think for a lot of people that listen to the show like they hear that you don't really sound like Brooke and Fane. Mm. And if you close your eyes, you don't really look like Alex when you talk. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I get what you mean. Um, and so he goes, and I think that it's hard for a lot of people to connect with because they didn't come from where you've come from. But when I was hired to do my, um, Nixon had always told me, like, we want to appeal to everyone. And not everyone is like Brooke and Fame. We want everyone to be able to feel like they're welcome and listen to my, and that's where you come in. And that's your role, which is like a smaller audience, obviously, but we love everyone. But at the time, I was kind of a lot of turmoil about who I should be on air. And at the end of the day, just be yourself. That's the whole what everyone's always told me. And my coach said to me, he's like, look, I think it's it's hard for a lot of people to relate with you because it's like you've got these walls up or you don't really fully letting us in. Mm. And in radio, I've always, always thought it was weird when people are like, oh, you have to like tell us about yourself. And, and I'm like, I don't want people to know about my life. <laughs> I don't want people to know what I do outside of Mahi. Mm. But to be relatable to people, they have to be like, well, what do you do? What do you like? What are your likes and yeah. dislikes, you know? And so I said, look, I've always sung my whole life and – I remember it was the weekend I'd messaged the boys and I was like, okay, so Jay said I need to be more vulnerable or I'll play out this like draft version that I've got of a song that I recorded ages ago, like mm. 2018. And the boys were like, man, all good. And so they played out the draft version and thankfully people really liked it. Some people really hate it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Which is amazing because we love when people- Wait, did they send that into you? Did oh, yeah. People, oh, people say okay. the song- when at first, because I was so nervous, mm. thankfully people were really, really nice and they didn't read anything mean about it. Yeah. But you know when time progresses and people are like, that song's trash, it's yeah, overrated. Yeah. I'm like, fear opinion. Yeah. yeah. Is um, that when they filmed you? They, they filmed it when they aired it, eh? Yeah. They said, so it's that yeah. one. Yeah, because I, yeah. I remember you kind of like, oh, fish a little bit about yeah, it. Yeah, I was like, like please oh, be man. nice. Yeah. Like, I'm just, And I was. I was shitting my pants to yeah. share that, man. Because on my final, when they speak about things, they speak about things. <laughs> they do not hold back. <laughs> Um, and so I was, yeah, really scared. And then everyone kind of hit me up after they were like, so you're going to finish the song. Mm. I can't keep listening to this two minute recording on Instagram of the song. I was like, oh no, nah, I don't know if I will finish it. And Brooke and Fame and Jace at the time were like, this is awesome. Like we finally got to know who really Alex King is and what Alex King does outside of Mahi. Mm. And I was like, okay, cool. Like whatever. <laughs> and then... Brooke and Fame kind of like forced me to finish the song. So I went back into the studio with my producer, Eddie, who's amazing. And I remember I had, was putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And I still got to the studio and I hadn't finished the lyrics. Eddie doesn't know this, by the way. <laughs> I still hadn't finished the lyrics. So I sat in my car and wrote the lyrics real quick oh, to sheesh. the second verse. Yo. And I was like, ah, on that'll do. Spot. That'll do. Yeah. I, some of the lyrics in that song I don't think even really make sense in that second verse but yeah you know <laughs> poetry art whatever they call it <laughs> um, and I remember yeah I went into the studio we finished it and Eddie goes oh I really like it <laughs> and I was like oh thanks <laughs> little did he know <laughs> yeah and then so anyways f aired the song and people were really nice and uh, which I'm so grateful for and um got to like the number five on the charts or something the New Zealand awesome. charts, which is awesome for yeah. a first song great attempt I've never actually said this though now looking back at the song it's kind of boring okay. <laughs> and that's not to offend people that like the song because there are people out there that love the song um but personally as myself where I am now as an artist because I recorded that 
in 2018. I first started the song in 2018, then we finally finished it in 2020. I'm at just different pathways of what I want my music to sound like. Mm. But because we wanted to get it out there and the people wanted to hear it, cool. Yeah. But I think now moving forward, my next music, people will either love it or they'll hate it. Okay. I That's what I think anyways. Okay. Because it's it's similar to When It's Over, but it's really not. So there's more instruments. It's yeah. like real music, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm not saying that the song's not real music, but more live bands and percussion and yeah. other than like the uns-uns. When, when, when can we see that, you know, the more music coming out? <sighs> I don't know because I'm – I Are you am, perfectionist? Yeah. Oh, yeah okay. But also I'm real – I get real shy with mm. people because – like I said, like the my funner, they don't hold back. Like if they yeah. think it's trash, they're gonna tell you it's trash. Mm. It's like that older cousin that's always like, mm, "You look better in that other thing," and yep. you're like, "Oh, you can't call me." I really like this outfit, but all good. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm hoping the end of next month at least have another song out. Yeah, and then get going from there. No one knows this, but an album. Yes. We're going with an album exclusive again. Yeah. Is We're not going with an EP. Yeah, I'm not telling anyone that. We're not going with an EP. We're going with an album. Because yes. I've just got so many songs that have been banked up for ages yeah. and I'm like, just get it out. Mm. So many people have been like, just do an EP. It's way quicker. And I'm mm. like, just shut What's up. What's the difference between an EP and a... Less tracks. Yeah. Oh, I got so you. like on the album, it's like 14. Yeah. And an EP can be like five to seven. Oh, I got you. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, I've seen a few of those. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like... The album is on the way. But there's so much behind it. you got to get photos. you got to... Yeah. Yeah. Write up the lyrics and oh my days. So yeah, yeah. Are you in the studio often? No, nah, I'm not. So you want to be in the studio more often? I yeah, I do. I should be in it more than I am. Mm. Um, but just with work and stuff, like I often, I'll often write the song, sing the song, and then I'll send it to Eddie, and then he'll just prod it up. Yeah, and then I'll come in and be like, take that out, take that out, put that in, put that in. Mm. And um, he gets so whole hard with me, eh? Because we'll listen to like the same bar over and over, and he's like, just move on. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's not finished. So. Hopefully by the end of next month, what's that, August? Yeah. Yeah, end of August, have a single out and July then August, yeah. September might be an album if I get my A to G. Yo. Yeah. Well, I appreciate two exclusives today. <laughs> 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 it, it, it means a lot. Oh, thanks. <laughs> nah, sweet. Oh, awesome. And so, do you reckon that's your, 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 your mo- actually, hold on. Okay. You want to be somewhere like that, yeah? Yeah. I'm it's 10.50. Yeah, you're all good. Is that all good? Yeah. Okay. Oh, real quick. I didn't tell you, eh? Mm. <laughs> I have a class. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring them. No, no. Yeah, yeah, but no, it's all good, it's all good. I'm gonna bring them down here. Okay. And stuff, and then okay. I'm gonna go grab them. Okay. Is that right? Yeah, of course. I'll sit them up there, and I'll come back and we'll finish them. Yeah, 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 of course. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, go down, go down. Oh my god. No, no, no. It's all good. the teacher? No, 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 it's crack up, eh? No, no, it's up to 10 Oh, okay, perfect. All right, so. What are you most passionate about out of everything you've done <laughs> in your life so far and, and where you're wanting to go? What do you think you want to end up in the future? Where do you want to end up? In my whole life, like what we were talking about at the beginning, I've always kind of had an internal turmoil with the entertainment business just because I had seen yep. what it did to my dad. And like I've seen my dad cry, like mm-hmm. Man, cry like yeah. proper, like whale cry. Like see him at his lowest. I've lowest. seen my dad at his lowest, and I've seen what the media can do, and I still see today how they portray my dad, who's the goat. Mm. Um, and it sucks, but I think it's always where I was meant to be. Like I was talking to Brooke about it. He goes, and when I've said like I don't know if this is for me, and he's always said like I don't see you in an office job. I don't see you doing a nine to five. I've never seen you do that. He's like, ever since I've met you, it's nev- that's not what you're meant to be doing. My passions will have always been music and acting. My whole life is what I wanted to do. I love acting. I love portraying different characters and you know, getting into that role. And um, it's always what I've done throughout radio. Like I've always done little jobs here and there. Um, and probably music. I think because I just always accidentally fall back into music. Yeah. Like I think it's just the universe being like, this is what you're supposed to do, bro. Shut up, sit down and do it. <laughs> and I'm like, nah, 
I'm going to go do something else and then I'll fall back into it again. I'm going to do something else, fall back into it again. Mm. So I think I really need to just knuckle down on, well, we'll see how the album goes. I could be a one hit wonder and people could be like, <laughs> she's trash. This album sucks. Moving on. You know, and I could be like a one hit wonder that performs at lunchtime talent quests and that's fine. Mm. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Back yourself. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, my passions have always and will always lie with with acting and, and um, music. Yeah. And radio. <laughs> <laughs> Hire me. <laughs> I'm sure you will get hired, man. There's no way that they're not gonna. Yeah, surely. Surely. Well, the vibes you guys got in that my the my home run. Surely. Oh, they piss me I heard off. You, I heard you guys are <laughs> actually the most successful though, in, in terms of listeners or something like that. Is We're that the right? number one music yeah. radio drive show in Auckland. Right. Yeah. Wait, is that wait? Does that mean in the afternoon? Yeah, even? in the afternoons. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it is true. Ah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's so weird for me to be like, yeah. I, I don't know where I got that from, yeah. but yeah. I think we've, we've posted about it on our Instagram before. Yeah, just to be. thank everyone that listens to our shit yeah. and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, so how, how, how actually, um, I want to ask you, what what is a day in the life of Ooh. a radio presenter? What does that look like? Because 5 a.m. Yeah. Gym. <laughs> okay. And then another gym. Now I'm talking shit. Personally for myself. Yeah. I will try and go to the gym. <laughs> so I'll wake up, go to the gym because I don't have to be at Mahi till like mid morning lunchtime. Mm. I've got the whole morning to myself and a lot of the time, cause I love my sleep. Like I'm, I can sleep all day. That's so good. Um, sleep in if I don't go to the gym and wake up, get ready, go to Mahi and we'll plan for ages. We plan for about an hour. And then if we have other interviews, we like to do them, we try and get them done before the show or if not a lot of the time, we just do them live. Right. Um, so it's like doing that and sorting out interviews and because we don't have a producer on our show, so it's just Brooke Fame and myself because we lost our producer Brock um, in COVID last year. Not He didn't die to COVID, oh my God. <laughs> we, he lost his job. Yeah, great we way of putting Brock. it. <laughs> um, yeah, God. Um, yeah, so he lost his job. And so we've had a producer, we haven't had a producer, sorry, for like a year and a half, which sucks. But we love it because it's the grind and we love being the underdog and we love being told no and, you know, having all these obstacles and yet still being number one and still having that fire behind us to get what we want, um, which is cool. And I think it's made all of us know that it's just not. And, and people say, they're like, you just must turn up and just talk shit. And I'm like, nah. It really is, isn't it? I wish we yeah. could just turn up and talk yeah. shit. Blanche, could you please report to reception and bring your bag? Dan Blanche. Thank you. Dan. <laughs> your lunch. We're actually at school. <laughs> <laughs> We're shooting this out of a school, um, a school, by the way. So for those yeah, so the know, so. Um, intercom is going off. <laughs> um, but yeah, nah, so what was I saying? Talking about the day in the life of a Oh, yeah. Thing, of a, and of a so... Team. I wish we could turn up and yeah. and just talk smack, but that won't ever happen. Cause you I'll, really have to know your stuff, I'll eh? coach. Oh, and I try, mm. but mm. I get the facts wrong yeah. nine times <laughs> out of ten. And that's, you know, there's humour in that, that I don't know the full story. And people text in Alex. <laughs> like I was like talking about a movie the other day and people like text in and they're like, Alex, um, that movie's already out. <laughs> I mean, the movie's already out, guys. Yeah. Go and watch it. Um but yeah, so that's kind of like the day in the life. And again, I know we're not out there digging holes and we're not doing man's man's work, but I think it's just that you constantly have to be on. Mm. And there are days where I want to cry. I don't want to go to work. Yep. I don't want to talk to anyone. Whereas where, you know, when you can do another job and you can just sit there on your computer, answer emails and that's it, don't talk to me. Yeah. There are days that I want to do that so bad. Mm. There are days where Brooke and Fame piss me off and <laughs> vice versa. There are days where I want to wring their necks <laughs> and vice versa. But you always have to be on because people tune in to get away from their life and they tune in for the entertainment. And at the mm. end of the day, we are just people's entertainment on their drive home. Yeah. Nothing more, nothing less. It's not brain surgery. Yeah. And that's what Nixon's always said. He's like, you're there to have fun and entertain people. Yeah. Relax. And I think you guys are having fun. Yeah. And yeah. that's what we do. We just have fun. And it's like three mates who talk to each other. But it's them um, after you've finished a show, like you feel drained. Yeah. Because it's like you're always doing this. And yeah, it's always yeah, a yeah. joke and it's a good time and it's laugh and grateful, but it can be really draining. Exhausting. Yeah, exhausting yeah. emotionally. It's like a four or five hour um, show, right? Yeah. And stuff. So, yeah, yeah you constantly having to talk, come up with things. Mm. I guess you're looking at news quite often yeah. as well. But it's just, the, it's just the fact that 
some days where I want to be like, mm. guys, I feel like shit. No one wants to listen to that. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm yeah. driving home because I've had a shit day. Okay, I've done all the hard work. You just sit there and entertain me. And that's what we are. But there are some days where I want to be like, <laughs> I want to cry. <laughs> and, you know, and, and do all this shit. But that's not what people listen in for. So, yeah, we're really grateful that we've got such a, an, an awesome um, My Home Run final that, that tune in. Mm. consistently on the days some days i'm like why <laughs> <laughs> but yeah nah yeah. grateful but guess what it's friday yes we're at the Woo! end of the week so it's time to be excited it's friday that's the one well at least when we're shooting this <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 normally i so i know i'll release this on monday so like oh, yeah, people, nice. people will hear it on a monday and yeah. stuff you know fresh fresh mm-hmm. start to the week get mm-hmm. their monday going mm-hmm. i know monday you know a lot of people don't like monday's my yeah. favorite day personally oh yeah because um, it gets you you know you, you get back into your routine yep. a little bit i mean five uh, days to go and get it that's right exactly yeah, yeah yeah exactly good way of putting it yeah you spoke about um interviewing people right mm-hmm. who has to be your most favorite guest you've ever interviewed recently this year david ellis oh real he was the man. Yeah. And where a is lot David Dallas from? Uh you he's know? from Auckland. Yeah. But like do you want to know where else yeah. from? No, yeah. I, I uh, thought he was so, something else as well, eh? Oh, um someone. Oh, Pretty okay. sure he's someone. Okay. Him and okay. his wife, someone. Okay. Um I could be wrong, don't quote me on that. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, he was the man to interview because he was so nice and mm. and he's real. Um he doesn't do interviews a lot because yeah. he doesn't again, he just doesn't feel like he should go somewhere if he doesn't have something to say. Mm. But he came in, we talked about his Rose Tint Deep Tour, which is going down this year. Um, kicks off in a week, I think. Little plug. Mm. Um, <laughs> and yeah, no, nah, it was real cool to talk to him. And it was real cool to just understand that for him, like it's always just been the music. Mm. Like whether he's been able to pay his rent or, or, or shit like that, he's always had the hustle and he's always believed and he's always backed himself. Awesome. And that was real cool to hear yeah. David Dallas, who I've looked up to my whole life because my brother who's done music, his life too. And I've listened to David Dallas growing up and, you know, finally get to, getting to interview one of my idols. I was like, mean. Um, international, sweetie. She was so cool. She was really cool to talk to. She was real nice. Um, she's a real cute American accent. And <laughs> yeah, no, nah, she was just really fun to talk to. Yeah. She was a really good time. So I would say, yeah, David Ellis and, and Sweetie. Mean. Yeah. Mean, mean, mean. Um, what do you want to achieve by the end of, I guess, a radio career if you ever mm. end up finishing your radio career? I think in radio, I forget the platform that we have every day is – is mind boggling. Mm. Like there are people that won't ever call in. There were people that won't ever text in, but they listen. And I think if I'm able to, oh, this is so cliche. If I'm <laughs> able to make people smile and laugh, yeah. like that's all good. Uh, and, but that really truly is the answer. Yeah. Cause in radio, like it is what it is. And you're there to be yes, informative and, and speak for our people and, and speak on things. And sometimes um, a lot of the stuff that, we don't really get to say, like, we can either say that on our social media platforms and things like that. But I think at the end of it, just being able to um, especially give, like, females like me, like, a voice. Mm. My whole life I've gone through life not really having friends and feeling like I've I find been, that so hard to believe it. been left out. And, yeah, I mean, I didn't go to a school that really favoured, like I said before, favoured mm. brown girls. And so my whole life I've been in... In, in turmoil with like am I this person am I this Alex and radio's really given me a voice where I'm like well this is who I am and if you don't like me mm. me you don't like me and if you do like me awesome um, because the people that it's the people that DM me and message me and they say hey like you said this three weeks ago and it really changed my life and right. I was like what yeah like you don't realize that one small comment someone mm-hmm. could be having the shittest day of their life and then you say one thing that makes them laugh or one thing that stuck with them i remember a guy called us and he goes alex said this quote like a month ago and it was like god only gives their toughest challenges to their strongest warriors mm. and he called up and he quoted me and he was like yeah bro and that was the turning point in my life and wow. i was like damn wow. and i remember going off air and i cried because yeah. i was like holy shit Like you just don't understand the platform that we have every day for these people. And so if I can do that for people, uh, I think, you know, if radio, if I stay in radio for a while, if it comes and goes, at least I know that I've left it doing my best and um, yeah, hopefully making people smile and laugh along the way. 
Mm. That's a neat little uh, neat little way of putting it, eh? Yeah. You know? Um, are you a goal-driven person? I would like to say I'm goal-driven. Yeah. I have goals. Mm. I don't write them down. Like You know how everyone's like, yeah, yeah I write, I write my down. goals down and da 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 I don't write my goals down because I'm such a person. And my dad's always said, like, you need to relax when it comes to this because I've been such a person. Also, I never really talk about my mum really quickly. Shout out yeah. to my mum. You're the best. Love you, Rose. <laughs> um, but I've been the person that's like, once I get something, I'm like, sweet, what's next? My dad's like, relax, chill in the moment. And I'm mm. like, nah, like I'm here. I want to go here, 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 here. And that has been um, really good for me in the fact that I'm always ready. I'm like ready to go. Like mm. I'm ready to grind it out and I'm ready to do it. But once I've gotten there, I never really appreciate getting there because I'm like, cool, what's next? Like for me now in my radio career, I'm like, sweet, like we're here right now. Like we want to be the number one radio station in the mm. afternoon. Like, cool, sweet, that's next. And then if we get there, when we get there, manifest, um, I'll be like, sweet, now what's next? Cool, we're going to go do something else, you know? Um, so I think that's what my goals are is that I know that when I get them, like I don't write them down and cross them out and things like that, but I know what they are. And once I get there, I'm like, sweet, next. Yeah. And I think, which is funny because dad's always like, you don't need to go next. And I'm like, you said it all the time. <laughs> yeah. But I forget, like, I'm like a kid. Yeah. So I'm like, calm down. Got my whole life ahead of me. But yeah, I guess, yeah, I definitely am goal driven. But like you say, when people like write them down and stuff, I'm like, ah, I know yeah. what they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Before we kind of wrap this all up, mm. is there anything else that you kind of would want to chat about? Anything that, that comes to mind or, or things that we've left out that, that we should, you know, add into the chat and stuff? Anything? a good question mm. um i think because there's probably a thousand oh and yeah. one things that we've missed oh for sure i think um for people that listen to this podcast like obviously it's called the back yourself podcast mm. people come here because they want to learn how to back themselves and i will say this at 23 i never really um thought that i would be on this journey of like self-love and self-healing that I am today. Four years ago, I had no idea who I was. I wasn't sure. I felt like the biggest loser. I saw all my friends succeeding at uni and I saw all of my friends doing cool shit and having fun and going to flat parties and being a kid. And I was like, fuck, bro. Like, you." I was like 19 being like, you're a loser. <laughs> yeah. And where I am today... I've realized to to look back on my past experiences and understand that like the universe honestly has a plan for you. Mm. But you have to take those steps to get what you want. So for example, you can't like sit around and pretend like everything's all good when it's not. And so for myself, when I look back on things um, and the mistakes that I made and everything that's happened, like it's taught me a lot about myself and it's taught me to really dive deeper into why I made those mistakes or why I have self-doubt. If you can understand or if you can realise that you have self-doubt, that's the first step because a lot of people don't actually realise that they have self-doubt. So if you can understand that, fuck, like I'm, I'm not backing myself, like cool, that's step one. It's the fact that you realise it, big steps. And then it's what you do afterwards. So like when I was in my lowest points of my life in a toxic relationship and didn't really have a job or like I was floating around and yeah. I had no idea what to do. The first major thing that I had to do was recognize that I was that low and recognize mm. that, okay, cool, we're here. What do we do now? And that's always what I have to- That's tough, man. To, to do and for a lot of people- it's hard to recognize that you're yeah. down and out. Exactly. And it's hard to recognize like, shit, like I'm actually really vulnerable right now and I have no idea what I want to do. And that's all good. But if you don't recognize that, you're never going to fully transcend into this journey of of healing and, and loving yourself. And um, I never really understood like backing yourself as a part of loving yourself. And I feel like in New Zealand society, like we're such small poppy syndrome. That like once you reach the top, it's always like getting that person down where it's like, and a lot of people are saying, in New Zealand, everyone's humble, right? Everyone like, yeah. you, you, you're supposed to be like, oh, like humble if you don't talk about yourself. But there is, it's confidence in backing yourself. It's not like 
talking yourself up and talking shit out of your ass but there is and I think that's wild in New Zealand that you know when people are confident that they're, they're torn down for that and I think like even on this podcast when you know people come and listen like they are looking for that confidence yep. and it's all good to have confidence mm. you know it's, it's when that confidence takes over and you're not able to you know tame the beast um that I think you you get in trouble but I'm kind of rambling right now but yeah I think fine. with especially being on this podcast is that um recognizing if you're down and out recognizing if you feel like a loser um and then being like okay sweet we're here well, what do I do next mm. and to back yourself it's all good it's not cocky it's not yeah not humble having confidence in, in yourself is key and you have to back yourself to be able to get where you want to go. I think Israel um, Adesanya said it, but, you know, USC fighter and stuff. Mm. And um, and it was a little bit corny because a lot of people were giving him hate about it and stuff. Mm. But he was right at the time. He said it as well. Mm. Like in New Zealand has this um, mm. poppy syndrome that, that, you know, no one wants to be yeah, you know, out like, there. Yeah, because they're like, oh, we all have to be on the same level because we're all humble. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, yeah. We yeah. don't. We don't really want to be on the same level. You exactly. Know what I mean? like, we all kind of yeah. like, we want to be at the top. Yeah, but exactly. no one ever wants to say that because it's yeah, like, we'll it, just pull you straight it. down. Yeah. But there is a key in, in, in success where it's, you have to back yourself and be confident. And um, I know everyone says this, but like, just be you. Yeah. And if you're like, who the fuck am I? At least you don't, if you don't know who you are, that's mm. again, the first step. Mm. And then it's the steps after that, that matter. Yeah. I think it's also funny because you know you're saying at 19 right mm. how you you know you, you you're at that stage where mm. you're kind of just unsure unbalanced you know trying to find who you were mm. as a person but um you know like I'm a, I'm a school teacher and I say this all the time obviously your mum's a school teacher and stuff but um for me like I always say to my students like your real education mm. starts after school mm. you know what I mean mm. um but people don't really recognize that but I, I don't think I've like taken anything from school no, but you see what I mean like it, it, it's funny because eh? like I might get you know, people people will be like, well, why are you a teacher then? Yeah. But that's because I want my students to, to walk away from school knowing that we've set them up with some sort of a base. Mm. But there's actually like, like you said, if we mm. go back to, you know, what you're most fear, uh, scared of or, mm. or feared, um, feared of um, is that paper, you know, mm. like school's literally probably 1%, mm. not even that. Mm. And you mm. still got 99.99% left to go and discover. And like having those teachers like yourself that give you a good base and a good foundation and make you feel safe to step outside in the outside world yeah. is what matters. Yeah. I don't think I've ever used syntax yeah. from <laughs> yeah. maths Sin in my Cos life. Yes, yeah, yeah. syn cos tax ever yeah. in my life um, <laughs> since high school. But, yeah. you know, there are, like I could name like five teachers that I'm like, if they weren't there, I would have hated school. Yeah, exactly. And the teachers in the environment is what has really helped me, mm. you know, get into where I am today, but... Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all vibey. But hey, thanks for having me on your podcast. No, nah, it's all first, good. First podcast ever, yeah. which I, I, is cool. We're probably going to have to do this again down, yeah. the, down the line and yeah, stuff. Catch sure. up, obviously, when the album and all that comes yes, out. Yes, yes. You know, that, that, um, I'm real excited to see oh, where you thanks, go with it and stuff. Um, I appreciate you for being honest um, and oh. I'm trying about a lot of the things that you've you know, spoken on yeah. today. Yeah. Oh, um, thanks. Yeah, because I, I actually... The reason also why we probably need to do this again is because we need to get to know you a little bit more in terms mm. of family and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. We heard a lot about your dad, but like you mm -hmm. said at the end, your mum, obviously mm. I didn't know too much yeah, about mum and Yeah, mum, step parents, and yeah. yeah, everyone that's really siblings. Your brother, siblings, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So everything, everything. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I would love to come back on the podcast. And, oh, awesome. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. No, it's all good. Well, I enjoyed this chat, uh, but uh, that's us, eh? Yeah. All right. See you next time. Yeah, you too. <laughs>